Here is a nice example of a cirrhotic liver and this video will cover the classification of cirrhosis, the causes of cirrhosis, complications of cirrhosis and the diagnosis of cirrhosis. A simple definition of cirrhosis is diffuse and irreversible fibrosis of the liver with nodular regeneration of hepatocytes. Symptoms of cirrhosis include lethargy, nausea, loss of appetite and weight loss, jaundice, fever, stomach pain and abdominal swelling, spider nevi, confusion and personality changes. As cirrhosis progresses, other symptoms may develop and these are as a consequence of complications that occur due to cirrhosis that will be covered later. Cirrhosis may be classified according to either etiology or morphology. Etiology is the most useful way of classifying it. If it is classified according to morphology, there are two types. Micronodular cirrhosis, where the nodules are less than 3 mm in diameter, and macronodular cirrhosis, where the nodules are greater than 3 mm in diameter. In this cirrhotic liver, the nodules are clearly greater than 3 mm in diameter, and this is macronodular cirrhosis. And in this slice of liver, the nodules are so small that they are quite difficult to see, and this is an example of micronodular cirrhosis. The nodules are, of course, less than 3 mm in diameter. There are many different causes of cirrhosis. In the West, the most frequent cause of cirrhosis is alcohol abuse, and this accounts for approximately 60 to 70% of cases of cirrhosis. With increasing obesity in populations around the world, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has an increasingly important cause of cirrhosis. Another important cause of cirrhosis is viral hepatitis B and C. And this is a liver biopsy from a patient with viral hepatitis. We're zooming into a councilman body. Other predisposing conditions include autoimmune liver disease such as primary biliary cirrhosis, chronic biliary obstruction, cystic fibrosis, hemochromatosis and Wilson's disease. Hemochromatosis and Wilson's disease are of course treatable conditions, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and cryptogenic cirrhosis. In fact around 10 to 15 percent of cases of cirrhosis are cryptogenic where no underlying cause can be identified. This is a liver biopsy from a patient with hemochromatosis. The iron is staining blue and untreated the progressive damage caused by iron accumulation may eventually result in cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is effectively the end stage of a long-standing assault on the liver. So there is sustained destruction of hepatocytes. This results in chronic inflammation and the chronic inflammation stimulates fibrosis and the damage to the hepatocytes results in regeneration into nodules. And this is what causes the problem. The change is irreversible. The nodules do not have a normal vascular drainage, so the normal vascular connections are lost, and there is no normal bile drainage because the normal bile drainage connections are also lost. And this is a liver biopsy showing micronodular cirrhosis. The blue staining area is the fibrous tissue that has been stained with the trichrome stain MSB and the hepatic parenchyma has been broken into nodules less than 3 mm in diameter. In fact the diameter of the nodules is almost the same as the width of the core biopsy. So this biopsy nicely proves the diagnosis of cirrhosis. The other thing it tells us is the 
likely etiology and you can see what look like white holes in the hepatocytes and this is fat that is dissolved out so this is fatty change and uh, this is one of the features of alcoholic liver disease. This change is also seen in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Complications of cirrhosis include liver failure, portal hypertension and the development of hepatocellular carcinoma. Consequences of liver failure include hypoalbuminemia, so the liver fails to produce enough albumin and this causes a drop in the osmotic pressure of the blood causing edema and ascites to develop. Decreased clotting factors are produced. This results in bleeding and purpurae. The liver starts to fail to eliminate toxins and endogenous steroid hormones. Failure of elimination of endogenous steroid hormones may result in gynecomastia and spider nevi and failure of toxin elimination may result in encephalopathy and coma. Patients with cirrhosis are also much more susceptible to infections. Portal hypertension results in enlargement of portal systemic venous anastomoses and this may result in esophageal varices, hemorrhoids, caput medusae around the umbilicus and splenomegaly. Portal hypertension may also be complicated by ascites and portal vein thrombosis. This picture shows a swollen abdomen due to ascites and a caput medusae, that's the swollen veins radiating from the umbilicus. The purple streaks in the esophagus are esophageal varices. These are very fragile and bleed easily and may cause torrential hematemesis. The other major complication of cirrhosis is the development of hepatocellular carcinoma. And this is more frequent in cases of macronodular cirrhosis. And here is a hepatocellular carcinoma that has arisen in a cirrhotic liver. Liver function blood tests are useful in the diagnosis of cirrhosis. Alkaline phosphatase, AST, ALT and bilirubin are all raised. Albumin is decreased and the prothrombin time is increased. Useful radiological investigations include CT, ultrasound and MRI. MRE is magnetic resonance elastography and this shows the stiffness of body tissues, including the liver. And the most invasive way of diagnosing cirrhosis is, of course, a liver biopsy. And here is a liver biopsy showing features of cirrhosis.